So over the past few weeks I've been playing around with a uh, design of an antenna that I found in an old declassified book from 1945 and uh, it doesn't really have a name but um, I have no idea what it's actually called and I've been playing around with this antenna and it's uh, been working out quite well because um, for some time I've been trying to find a decent um, omnidirectional antenna design that uh, works similar to a biquad and actually uh, gives excellent uh, gain without having to have it too long and this is another design that I've played with it's uh, a biquad but it's also I'm trying to get some circular polarization going on there so it's very much like a cloverleaf antenna and uh, what I've actually done I've stripped those two designs down and I came up with this now I can't find any reference to it on the internet so uh, my best guess is this isn't, isn't the first time uh, somebody's ever thought of an antenna like this but uh, it's what I've been working on and uh, it actually performs really really well so I've uh, decided to make it for you today to show you how to build this and you will be surprised how powerful this little antenna actually is. Now something else in this video that I'm going to be using is this semi-rigid coax it's uh, really really cheap off eBay and again you can uh, put SMA connectors on this without having to need to actually crimp them you just actually solder them on and the good thing about this is you can add bends to your antennas like so now something else you're actually going to need to build this antenna which will really help you is a couple of pieces of wood now the size of this wood doesn't really matter but you actually want it so it's actually deep enough where it's actually deeper than the uh, wing on the antenna if I had it that way then it wouldn't lay flat because you're going to use two pieces of wood like this to actually hold your antenna as a jig so you can actually solder on your different wings on the antenna it just makes it a lot easier and the wire I'm going to be using is 20 gauge wire it's really really thin you can use uh, thicker wire if you like I've been uh, playing around with these antennas here and uh, what uh, the thicker wire does it does make it a lot more solid as a structure but it increases its bandwidth so it's uh, more potential to actually get interference from uh, other wavelengths that might be transmitting around you so if you stick to the really thin stuff 20 gauge then uh, you'll minimize that so this antenna is just based off a simple dipole antenna and it doesn't get much simpler than this it's just 25 millimeters quarter wavelength for the ground plane here 25 millimeters for the driven element here and the driven element is just the center core of the coax that uh, just stripped the outer core away and uh, that's actually does its job you don't have to do anything more that's as simple as it gets and the tubing you just get this from those cheap telescopic antennas and you just put it over the top of the outer braid and just solder it in at the top here but uh, this one it uh, starts off the same you've got the ground plane here and the quarter wave length here but uh, I've made some wings out of some uh, copper wire now the copper wire is actually measured off to half a wavelength but I put a bend in the middle so it actually separates them so we've got quarter wavelengths here and here here and here here and here so it all stays in at one quarter wavelength and it works really really well now depending on what you want to use these antennas for if you're going to use them for data transmission over Wi-Fi for instance this doesn't really uh, apply but if you actually want to use it for your FPV then it's a really good idea to use three blades for the actual transmission for the TX and four blades for the RX the uh, receive because that just works out a little bit better when uh, you've got a transmitting line and a receiving line but like I said with data Wi-Fi the uh, one antenna does both so it's not really going to matter which one you choose so what we're going to do we're going to actually make a four bladed one here on the video and uh, if you can make a four blade one obviously it's just as easy to make a three blade one but I'm going to actually use this uh, rigid semi rigid coax to actually make it because uh, I'm really impressed with this stuff it really uh, puts a uh, professional touch to your antenna so I've cut a piece of the tubing off to 25 millimeters now I actually want to get the solder flowing on the inside so in order to do that I'm going to have to clean the inside out because it is rather grotty inside and it's just uh, if you get yourself a piece of emery paper roll it into a tube put it inside and a few turns and what have you then uh, it will actually come up quite nice and clean inside so actually solder will stick to that now 
So like I said, this part of the driven element here wants to be 25 millimeters long. So I'm just going to mark off around 30 millimeters just so I've got a little bit to play with. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to strip away this outer braid here. And I'm using a piece that's uh, roughly 90 millimeters long. It will give me an antenna this kind of size. You can make it shorter or longer, whatever you want to actually use it for, whatever's uh, best for you. But uh, 90 millimeters tends to be a good length. So all I use for this, make a mark and just use some wire strippers. And just pinch it in. It is a little bit tougher this uh, outer braid because it has got solder flowed into it. And then you can gently just pull it off. And what's nice about this coax as well is the inner core is also solid so it makes a really rigid base for this. So what I'm actually doing is flowing some solder down on the inside of this tube. I'm not too fussed about coating it all the way down. So next what you need to do is hold the coax in a crocodile clip, a pair of these helping hands, and uh, put the tube over the top. So have it so the actual tube is sitting on the base of the crocodile clip, so you're using that as a gauge to get the right length. And then we can now flow some solder in on the top. So to actually get a connector onto this uh, semi-rigid coax, it's really, really easy. No crimping tools needed, like I've said. And uh, I was unaware that they actually sold this so cheaply, cheap enough to actually make antennas out of, until uh, I saw an episode of RC Muller Reviews. And uh, I have bought this on eBay. I bought it off uh, China RF. And uh, it's only a couple of pounds a metre. And uh, it arrived within a week, so... Really, really good. I will be ordering some more of this. Now, these are the special connectors that are designed to actually be soldered on this uh, coax. But uh, again, you don't really need these. If you wanted to crimp onto this coax as well, you, you can do so. It uh, doesn't need to be soldered. But uh, again, these connectors are quite cheap. So what you do, you strip away some of that out of core, leaving yourself about 3 millimeters in the center pin there and what I'm going to do is put a little bit of tin onto this and a little bit of tin on the pin and then join them up with some heat and then uh, the same again put the connector on and then flow some solder around the side so to cut the copper wire what you're better off doing especially if you want to make a few of these is get a straw and cut a piece of the straw off at 50 millimeters put your copper wire through it and then get your uh, side cutters and get them flat to that straw, the top of the straw, and then we can cut that. And then we've got a length of straw there that is uh, 50 millimeters long. So then if you cut another length of straw, that's 25 millimeters long, and do the same again, but this time get a uh, pair of needle nose pliers that have a flat area like these ones have. And then you can put it over the top of the wire, laying flat on the actual straw and then we can take that away and then we can put our bend in like so and it saves you measuring each one individually and uh, that way you won't get uh, the errors that you may get by measuring them each time with the uh, ruler so I'm now getting ready to actually put everything together and solder them on but these um, little wings that you've made just want nipping in a little bit so the two points are actually as long as this driven element just um, about a millimetre, two millimetres short of the base so you're not going to be actually touching that ground so they'll be connected up about there so you just need to nip them in a little bit. So I'm just using one of the blocks of wood I've got the antenna held down with some masking tape across there and the two wings held on at the sides and uh, these will hold them in place while I just fl flow some solder into the joints and then hopefully they'll be nice and rigid. And of course I have uh, pre-tinned the ends of the wings and also pre-tin the element as well. So now I've got it uh, fastened down ready to uh, solder the other two wings on and now hopefully you can see what I mean by the two blocks of wood so it can fit that uh, wing in between them and give a nice level flat surface here so we can actually flow some solder on and get it all nice and uniform. So we'll try the three winged antenna first I've got my uh, test router about 45 metres away cutting through three brick walls so it's jumped straight up to around 
nice solid. Creeped up a little bit more. So it's not bad at all. So what we'll do, we'll try the four bladed one next. Hoping to see slightly better improvement here, probably about 5% improvement, but uh, we'll see. So that's jumped straight up to 94%, settling down about 89%. So more than 10% more gain on the uh, four bladed one. Let's try and get it to settle down. So not too bad at all. It seems to have settled down there now and it's maxing out 100%. So yeah, a couple of uh, surprising antennas here. I uh, didn't expect it to be well over 10% increase over the three bladed one, the four bladed one, but um, yeah, really surprising how powerful these actually were. And uh, like I say, my uh, test router is about 45 meters away, cutting through three brick walls. So really powerful little antenna. So I hope you enjoy this video and you found it useful. And uh, if you did, as always, please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me for the next one.